welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I have this this song uh, running through my head call, called I Will Not Back Down. I won't back down. I won't back down. And I love, I think it was Tom Petty that sang it, but I love the Johnny uh, Cash version of, of it. No, I won't back down. It's time for us as Catholics, step into the breach, stand our ground. It's time for us to stand for moral justice and for virtue for the official teaching of the Catholic Church uh, to be true to our church. Remember, the church is married, is the bride of Christ, and the Holy Spirit is the one who guides and leads our church. And throughout history, the church has had its times of renewal, its times of purging, its time time of refreshment. And uh, I'm so uh, excited about the season that we're in now as the Catholic Church. It's almost like you know, an, an engine, uh, it goes through its cycles. And uh, as the piston drops down, it draws in the fuel and the air, and then the spark ignites and it explodes. And so it, during times of compression, like we might feel that we're in that, a season like that now, get ready because there will soon be a spark and there will be an explosion. It's the time of the harvest. You know how I can tell? Because it's during the time of the harvest when the wheat is separated from the chaff. And there's a season now where there is this separation. There is this exposing of, of the chaff in our midst. And, uh, but we uh, should be excited because it's the time of the harvest. And we need to be harvesters. <clears throat> we don't all need to be teachers, but we all need to be witnesses. Uh, remember, the word martyr means to be a witness, by the way. Remember when St. Paul, when Saul had his conversion experience, knocked off his horse on the way, it rode to Damascus, uh, <clears throat> blinded stumbled his way into Damascus. Ananias came over and prayed for him, and he had his vision, and then he also baptized him. And then it says he immediately went and shared uh, and gave testimony to Jesus. Now, later, he spent several years out in the desert. Uh, Probably, they say, went down to Mount Sinai, the same place of Moses, the cave there, the same place Elijah had stumbled to during his time of kind of depression. Uh, And then Saul came out roaring with tremendously deep teaching, but initially he testified. You can be, you, everyone can be a witness. We may not all be great teachers. We may not all be the people on Catholic Answers or 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 the uh, the Pope Benedicts and Pope John Paul II, our great theologian, uh, recent popes. We may not all be great theologians, but we can all be witnesses. Jesus said to go out and spread the gospel to all of the nations. So. You, you know, Father Robert Spitzer says that we have this upward yearning for, for uh, love, for beauty, for justice, uh, for a uh, feeling of going home, and for truth. And yes, we should all pursue truth, and we should be studying. We should, you know, leaders are readers. But you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to always go out and say, well, this is the reasons for my—these my, my, are all the, the, the reasons— you could just say, God is love. God is beautiful. God touched me. He changed my life. You know, you can, you can be a witness. So I'm just challenging everybody. This is the time to stand your ground. Don't back down. Step into the breach and proclaim the good news and be a witness to God's love. Um, so that's, uh, that's my little opening right now. We want you guys to go to deepadventure.com. What's really cool right now, what's going on with our ministry is I think EW10 must really like us or they're just running out of stuff to show on TV because... Long Ride Home is re-airing again, on, and it's on Tuesday nights at, I believe it's 11 p.m. But without them even telling us, they're re-airing our original reality show, Deep Adventure, which is a, a surfing retreat that we gave. It's a one-hour special. They've been re-airing it in prime time, so maybe they're just getting desperate. I don't know, or they made a big mistake and put the wrong show on. I'm not sure, but, but we really appreciate all your prayers and support. And I want to say something to you. Yesterday, um, Cindy and I, I always know to ask Cindy to pray, and when she prays, um, there's always seems to be, especially when I ask you to pray for me, there always seems to be this kind of wind in my sail, this kind of leaning into the wind feeling that I get. And yesterday, I, I kind of yelled across the room to her, Cindy, <clears throat> pray for this situation. Let's pray. Let's play a de- 
decade of the rosy for this situation, for this person. And within five seconds of saying this prayer, that person, uh, uh, the phone started ringing with that person's name popping on it. So everyone pray, stand to your ground, study, but by all means be witnesses. And so today we have a really cool guest. I got to meet him and his wife, Patty, at the Napa Institute. And guess where it was? It was in Napa. Beautiful, beautiful place, the Meritage Resort. Anybody can go there. Uh, it's a beautiful place. It's right in the middle of a winery. In fact, there's a, a cave where they used to store the barrels of wine, where they put the, uh, where now it's a, it's a place to hold the mass. And there's a ch- Eucharistic Adoration Chapel in the Meritage Resort. And when we were there, there's 31 masses a day. But to provide this opportunity to just get to know people and sit and have long breakfast with them. And I was so fortunate to sit across from Tom Gripe. Uh, he's kind of an intimidating guy. I mean, he is the CEO and president of the largest Catholic credit union in the world, which is a really kind of a big deal. Uh, you got to be smart. You got to be a leader of people. And, uh, you know, as a CPA, I, I used to audit banks. So I know the heavy, heavy pressures that are under from compliance point of view and everything else. And, uh, and Tom Gripe became a friend and, and the Notre Dame federal credit union, which he's the president and CEO of has become a sponsor for our show. So, we thought we'd get to the bottom of this guy. Hey, Tom, aloha. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Are you? Sure. After listening to the open, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> well, one thing you got to remember is um, I live my life on the premise that you have to take your job very seriously, but never, ever take yourself that oh, seriously. That's beautiful. So you can, you can make yourself a, a pretty enjoyable life if you look at it through that lens. Praise God. And you live, you live life on the edge, though. I mean, I'm seeing Tom. Those of you guys who are watching him on YouTube. Uh, remember, you can subscribe to our, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and see our interviews, not just listen to him. He's kind of surrounded by paper. Do you ever have a, have you ever had a paper cut, Tom? <laughs> I've got one actually <laughs> right now on my thumb, it's, which I was digging through the papers before uh, signing on to see you. So it's funny that you say that. I think the bleeding has stopped. But though, the, so that's good. <laughs> you've called in the medics, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, it's, 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 we're living on the edge. Those of us who live in the paper world, the financial people like you and me, we're living on the, it's, it's, you know, people have no idea what a paper cut, how, how badly that can hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what well, does it could affect your banjo playing? Oh, no, no, no. I, I had tried being a banjo player when I was in high school. And after a very traumatic event, I decided that it was uh, not in my future. So I gave it up. So is there going to be a reality show about this? I mean, so you had a traumatic event. You know, because when I think of someone playing the banjo, (laughs) you can't help but smile when you play the banjo. Oh, I know it. I know it. It wouldn't make for a good reality show. Well, okay. I I think I said already that I'm not very good uh, banjo player. That's so humble of you, Tom. It's so humble of you. So humble. Uh, No, really. I am tone deaf. (laughs) It just doesn't work. And there was this older gentleman who was teaching me to play banjo. And I kept going religiously every week. And to see the agony on this man's face, it was really something. But I kept coming back. He kept asking me, you know, are you practicing? Are you practicing? And I kept saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and you could, it was kind of, if, you, if those of your listeners uh, um, ever watched the Jack Benny program, the old ones, it was truly a, re, um, a replay of Jack Benny taking violin lessons from Mel Blanc. It was really hysterical. Well, anyway, one day I was there and he was exceptionally anguished and he was lifting it, <laughs> licking his lips and he was sweating and he was crying. He said, no, no, relax your wrist. No, no, you're on the wrong. No, no, stop it. Stop it. And finally he said, you know what? Let's just call it a day. Keep practicing. Come back next week. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I left and found out the next day that about Five minutes after I left, he dropped dead of a heart Oh, my attack. goodness. <laughs> it's well, terrible, but I, you, that's why I fear that it was God's way of telling me that I should give up the banjo. Oh, my goodness. Wow, <laughs> that's like the most horrific story we've ever had on our show. Yeah, I don't know why I laugh when I say Did it. Did they say it was a banjo-related incident? <laughs> a banjo-related incident, right? I, I never got called on by the detectives. They called it natural causes, thank heavens. But you know that I'm a professional ukulele player? I did not know that. You, have no, you didn't know. I bet a lot of my listeners don't. So let me ask oh you this my. question. If you make money when you play the ukulele, that's how you become a professional. That's how, what, that is what makes you considered a professional ukulele player, right? Sure. And so like when I play uh, uh, ukulele, people will often come up and pay me to stop. 
<laughs> so doesn't that make me a professional? I think so. Well, how many how many so. strings does a yeah. banjo have? Five. So I so you're better than me because I play ukulele has four. So I think if it was one, I'd still mess it up. Now what was your okay? Now we listen. We 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 spent this whole time. What could your motivation possibly be? What, what did you want to meet girls or something, or why would you pick up the banjo? Someone made well, you do it. Let me let me tell you. If my goal was to meet women, it certainly a banjo would not be the <laughs> instrument to do it. Accordion, the accordion. <laughs> the accordion would be better. It's a yeah. orchestra in one box. That's exactly right. No, um, I just love the sound of the instrument. I just I just love the range and the tone of it. And um, I just always wish that I could could play it. It was a, an unusual instrument. I guess that's always drawn me to the fringes of stuff anyway. You're, you're a fringe um, type of guy anyway. I guess We're talking so. with Tom Gripe. He is the uh, president and CEO of the largest Catholic credit union in the world, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and recently become a friend of mine. I'm going to go speak at Legata soon right up there, and then I get to go to a Notre Dame game and all that, so it's going to be pretty cool. But formerly a, a banjo abuser, and, uh, <laughs> but he has repented of his ways. When we get back, though, we're going to get into some, some beautiful discussion uh, about, about this, this, this whole realm of, of, of a Catholic and being in business and things like that and his personal testimony. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. If you're just tuning in and you missed the first uh, segment of our radio show, you should be very happy that you missed it. It was really bad. But now we get to start our next, our next segment, and uh, we introduce to you Tom Gripe. He is the president and CEO of the largest Catholic credit union in the world, probably in the universe, um, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. And I got to meet Tom at the Napa Institute a few weeks, a few months ago, I guess, and uh, and she said, we got to have you on our show. And it, it turns out that they became one of our corporate sponsors. So we're really, really pleased about that. But so, Tom, uh, should we talk about banjos or should we talk a little bit more? Well, you know, what we want to get into. Can you share with us just your your, your kind of your the, the Catholic CV? Uh, your, your, you were raised Catholic or give us the background on that. Sure. I was grow, uh, I was raised here in South Bend, uh, South Bend, Indiana. Wow, that must have been town. crazy. I mean, weren't you well, like, I mean. That's almost Very like blue. the Vatican of, of, of America. That's right. That's right. It's the uh, it's the holy grail of college football. Yeah, that's for sure. But it's a, South Bend is pretty pretty much a blue collar faith based community. Um, we I went to grade school at the Catholic school right around the corner, and then went to Catholic high school, and then by the grace of God, I got accepted into Notre Dame. Which, by the way, I wouldn't get into today with those same grades, wow. and was there. Graduated in 1979, moved to Arizona, and really spent 30 years of my career there. That's where I met my wife, Patty, and we raised our children. And And about eight years ago, um, after that journey, I had an opportunity to come back home here to South Bend and be president of the place where I had my very first account, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. So my life really is a completed circle. Thank you. Oh, that is so cool. You know, I, I I was inducted into the Catholic Sports Hall of Fame uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, Pat McCaskey and his group up there, the Chicago Bears owners, put that together. And uh, there was a guy there that played football for Notre Dame that was being oh. inducted. And gosh, I can't remember his name offhand, but he was talking about how he had fumbled the ball five times in one game. Oh, and then boy. he ended up scoring the winning touchdown. But when he showed up to practice on Monday, the the head coach, and I forget, even forget who the, what his name was, before Eric Parshigan, uh, he said, uh, 
you committed five mortal sins. <laughs> you need to go to confession five times. And so he sent them off running around the campus to find five different priests. So I would, uh, Thomas, when I go speak at Legatus, I'm hoping to get to go to a Notre Dame game. So life in Phoenix, Arizona, quite a contrast. It really was. Um, I was very lucky from a personal career perspective. Uh, that community grows has grown very quickly. So um, I'm a benefactor of what they say is a rising tide raises all boats. My career uh, progressed very rapidly because there was so much growth and opportunity there. So um, I was very lucky to be there um, during that period of time. So what, what, can you just give us a brief thing, CV, on your career then? Oh, sure. Um, started in banking as a commercial loan officer and uh, then uh, got into the private sector working for a, a publicly traded oil company. And then I left. Was it an started, exploration company? It was a, a exploration production, a refining and um, a retail network of gasoline stations. It was a fully integrated were you, station. Were you bringing was, oil in from Mexico or where were you getting your oil? No, no. New Mexico, the Four Corners area oh, of New okay. Mexico. OK, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I left and we started um, a payroll company in Phoenix. Oh. And that was really good. That was my first taste of being an entrepreneur. Um, I was a junior partner. And uh, when the company sold, um, I took my money and started a bank in Tempe, Arizona in 1999. It was uh, the second uh, business startup I did. This is and post SNL crisis? This would have been 1999. Yes. So post SNL. Wow. So we did that for so a couple like of years. you like pressure situations? I guess like a moth to a flame, man. A moth to a but flame. Were you a wild, was it a wildcatter type operation when you were in the oil business or no? No, no. It was very mature. Okay. It was mostly a refining operations that integrated upstream and downstream. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That takes some brains. But you weren't, must have not have been too smart if you went and decided to start a bank. <laughs> well, you always want to be the um, uh, the small, the smartest guy in the room, and I figured banking was um, a lot uh, better than uh, being with all those engineers uh, oh. in a refining oh. business. Oh, with those calculators tied to their belt, you know. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, you know, I used to work guys. for Deloitte Touche and Price Waterhouse, and I w worked in El Paso, Texas, for a while. And I remember oil, the oil business. I remember uh, auditing oil companies oh, yeah. and banks, and I remember going to this one bank and. We're sitting in the boardroom working a smaller bank, you know, not a big bank. And uh, and we're working uh, on a Friday night. You know, when you're in the CPA biz, you tend to work a lot of late nights. And uh, and I just remember him coming in and bringing open up the liquor bar and giving us all drinks. And he was a good old boy, you know, and they'll fool you. They'll come in under the under the radar. and You don't realize how smart they are, you know. Uh, when I was right, when I was right out of school, uh, I was a trainee and they uh, asked me to sit in on my very first um, loan approval meeting. And I was so excited about it. I was yeah. didn't know what commercial loan or what commercial yeah. loans. Yeah. yeah. So it was four thirty. We went into the, the manager's office. He shut the door. The chief credit guy was there and they looked at each other and they said, OK, should we let this gripe guy participate? They had it all orchestrated. They said, sure. So he reaches under his desk, <laughs> pulls, I'm not making this up. He pulled out a six pack of beer and we approve loans drinking a six pack of beer. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's, that's, that, that's the old days. Well, I remember we don't my do first... that here at the credit union, by the way, we do not do that at the credit union. <laughs> I, I know. Well, yeah, cause you use whiskey. No, oh, no, but I remember my, I, I remember when my daughter was born, I was working for Deloitte at the time in, I was living in Las Cruces, New Mexico, but worked in El Paso and we were auditing a bank. And, you know, one of the things you do when you go, you, you will go to one of the branches and kind of check things out, like on a sample basis. And I, I was the rookie guy, and it was my job to, to, uh, to count, just to count cash in the teller's window. You know, it was just, it's not a big deal, part of the audit at all. And I pulled the bait money. Oh, and, boy. Uh, you know, which sets off all kinds of alarms. And for this poor bank, the same day we showed up on our surprise audit, the feds did too. And now I pulled the bait money and all the cops and the FBI are there. So my, my boss said, you know, why don't you, know, you just had a baby last night at four in the morning. Why don't you head, go ahead and go home? So I did. That was my daughter, Fawn. But we're talking with Tom Gripe. He's the president and CEO of, of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. But what part of your sordid history is that you became a professor uh, of, uh, at Notre Dame, I think in the area of business ethics. Is that right? Uh, business finance, corporate finance. But corporate finance, which to me is the is, – you know, and I work for a commercial bank, by the way, too. Assistant uh, v AVP, Assistant Vice President of 
manufacturers Hanover Trust back in the day too. Okay. Interestingly okay. enough, but yeah, commercial banking is a different, a whole different animal. But you, oh, you, uh, sure. you, so you spent a few years there at Notre Dame. Uh, but one of the things you did do is you taught a class, I believe, on corporate ethics. Well, what we did is in the corporate finance uh, class, and that was the one class I taught for uh, seven semesters, was trying to integrate ethics and morality into business decision making. It's really one of the things that Notre Dame is really good at in their business school. And um, my job was really to go through the problems and do calculations and saying, you know, is this a project that we should do or not do? And based upon what the numbers say. And that's pretty straightforward once you teach the kids the, um, the, the nits and the gnats of it. But then I'd say, let me throw a curveball in here. In order to get these savings, you're going to have to lay off 200 people in this small town and there's no other employment. Do you still want to do it? That's where the conversation really became interesting. And it's getting kids to think holistically, not just about what the numbers say. Because sometimes business decisions, quantitative business decisions, is not always the right answer. And getting them to think like that, um, I think is important for them to be successful and being good people in the people. world. Because there's people. I mean, uh, the, the teachings of uh, Reverend Navarum, Pope, Pope Leo, back uh, in the 1900s, and, and, the, and the, re, the, the rewriting, the readdressing of that by two of our popes afterwards. Uh, there are people, I know when we would often be involved in the CPA land world of coming into where there was a workout situation, a failing business, and then people come in and they just do, they manage things by the numbers and say that if we do this and we do that, boom, all of a sudden this is going to fall through the crack and we'll have some profit. But they don't realize that there's a personal dynamic in there. You get rid of this department who just happens to have all the, the relationships with these other people on the outside world and within the organization that keeps everything together. And you start, you start, you start managing money starting at the bottom line and you, and you can really very soon find out how, how important people are. Wealth is, does not begin and end with money. Wealth goes beyond that. It transcends that and, and it involves human beings because human beings are the lowest common denominator. You know, and, and you know, Catholic social teaching talks about the importance of, of private ownership, uh, but it also talks about the, the port, which would be capitalism, I guess you would yep. say, but it also talks about the importance of solidarity, that we're all part mm -hmm. of the same human race and we need to help each other. We're talking with Tom Gripe. I'm so Glad to have uh, him at part of my life. Uh, he's, he's kind of a scary guy. He's the president and CEO of, of the largest Catholic credit union uh, in, uh, in the world, the Notre Dame Fe uh, Federal Credit Union. What's the website where people can find more, more out about what you do? Notre Dame FCU com. FCU stands for Federal Credit Union. But the problem is it's in Notre Dame, so really only people in South Bend can join? Oh, heavens no. We have uh, 58,000 members that are in all 50 states, and you do not have to be affiliated with the university at all. The rules of joining a credit union can be a little complicated, but the punchline is most people on the planet Earth should be able to qualify for membership. We're talking with Thomas Gripe. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're going to get right back. We're going to talk a little bit about financial liberation, uh, how you can uh, establish your own financial freedom. Uh, using the virtue of prudence and uh, the wisdom of Tom Gripe. We'll be right back with more. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everyone to go to our website, deepadventure.com. There's two things that would really make my day is if you would go there and subscribe to our newsletter, which uh, basically you get our radio show emailed to you weekly and a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, and I would like to, uh, uh, what, we might, we might, what we mean by that is often we do like these little two-minute segments uh, that you get to uh, receive via the newsletter. But you kind of become a part of our mission. And I also want to invite you to go and join Bear's Man Cave. If you're a man, uh, you should become a member of the Man Cave. The Man Cave is a private, secret Facebook group. You, so that's why you can't join it by going through Facebook. You have to join it by going to our website, deepadventure.com. 
Uh, and, and by the way, women, you can sponsor a man in your life or people out there you can sponsor for your priest, whatever, to, to be a member too. But um, the man cave is just the coolest thing because in there the men challenge each other with <clears throat> quotes from John Wayne or John Paul II or things that are going on in their own lives. Um, we recently had a member that had a beautiful conversion experience, uh, became part of our man cave. There was a great strengthening in his life. And then we found out uh, he had a liver disease and he just... Uh, he just went home uh, just recently to the Lord. But we know that he had a great impact on us, his personal journey towards etern eternity, but I think we did too. I uh, had a great impact on his life. And so the man cave is really cool. And about every two or three weeks or whenever I feel like it, we flip on a Zoom video chat room and all the men kind of show up with a shot of whiskey or a cup of coffee or whatever and maybe a cigar, one of our man cave cigars. And uh, we uh, talk story for an hour, and we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dialogue. It's not like I just talk to people, but we actually have a dialogue, and it's been really a powerful encouragement. So go to, go to deepadventure.com and join the Man Cave and go to our store. We have all kinds of uh, shirts and uh, mugs, and we have my books, and uh, we even have our seven sample uh, cigar, the seven virtue cigars there for you. And you know why we, we love to have you have, have that stuff because it's a way for you to participate in our evangelization effort. And it also funds us. And we're 100% funded by donations. And our budget is pretty, pretty daunting when you consider the fact that we have a TV, two TV shows and a radio show, the morning catechism and all, all the other things that we do. So we really need your help. But we have so much confidence in the Holy Spirit's provision. So we wouldn't beg, but we would just invite you to be part of what we're doing. We have uh, my friend Tom Gripe. He's the president and CEO of the largest Catholic credit union in the universe, or the multiverse, depending on whether you believe in Steve Hawkins or not, his thoughts. And he is, uh, he's a beautiful, strong uh, Catholic man and loves his family. And uh, we've been talking uh, over the last uh, week or two about different uh, things that you can do to help um, you know, beat the, win at the game of, of in the finances in your life. So, Tom, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm glad to be here. If you want to see how good looking it is, you can, he is, you can go to our YouTube channel. And by the way, subscribe. We need about 1,000 more subscribers, and YouTube said they're going to launch us to another platform. So, uh, yeah, you can see how good looking is, he is if you go, if you decide to watch us on, on our YouTube channel, too. Uh, Tom, <clears throat> let's just take a few moments and tell me about, um, give us a few hints. Uh, let's talk about, Someone is in their early 30s or maybe late 20s or in their 20s to have their first children. What are some of the things that, <clears throat> what are some of the, the, the warning signs or the positive things you can, they could consider doing with their finances? You know, when you're young like that and starting a family, um, normally what will happen is that you'll have this conflict. Intellectually, you'll know you know that you wanna build uh, for their college. You wanna build for your retirement. All these things you know you need to do. But day in and day out, there's just not enough money, right? We've all been there. I've been there, I know you have too. And how do you save for the future? How do you do it? And really the answer there is that it's just true grit. You have to decide that you are going to keep money in a 401k or an IRA. You are going to pay yourself first. And every little bit, even if it's a small amount, will grow because when you're young, you have the gift of compounding on your side. So once you get into the, the uh, comfort zone of putting just a little bit in, it's amazing how much that little will grow over five years, 10 years, 20 years. Yeah, so I, I like this statement. You said, pay yourself first. Yeah. I remember when my father shared those, that, that, those, that wisdom with me, and I didn't always follow it, and I would raid my IRA from time to time. And then, you know, oh. you have to think of it, uh, and that's why you have, the, explain the difference between saving and investing. Okay. Investing means that you are, uh, you're like priming the pump. That's how I, I tell people. Investing means you prime the pump with your own money, but then what you put the money into will grow on its own accord. Mm. Okay. Saving your money starts working part, for you. For working for you. It's the power of compounding. Savings, on the other hand, is putting money in a tin can and putting it in your backyard, right? And it's kind of like... It's not going to go anywhere. It's, but, it, but it's kind of like you kind of need a rainy day fund. And that, that's what savings is. It's just like it may be 100 days of income 
in case you have to make a change or you got or your car breaks down. Savings is is something you do if you want to go on vacation. But investing is right. the, is the thing that you put aside and you just act like it doesn't exist. Exactly. You're really paying your future self with investing, whereas savings will help your current self get through a, a pending disaster or setback or to do a special a special thing like a family vacation. Yeah, and it's a cool thing when you when you're sleeping at night and your money's make and your money is making money for you. Um, right. Talk about um, the wisdom in, 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 in buying a car. I mean, the, what, 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 what prudent, you know, the virtue of prudence, you know, what, when people are going out, I mean, I've had new car fever. Oh yeah. I'll have, I remember my have. first Corvette, <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> the worst yeah. possible time that I needed to buy it. I just, I just, I started breaking out in a sweat, you know, and, and I had to go down there and they, they saw me coming too. believe me, talk to us, <laughs> you know, right now someone might be facing that same sort of new car, car fever. But what's, what's a wise way for someone to, to buy a car? I know the credit union provides car financing. Oh, sure. But what, what type well, of, what, what you know, the modern days, the quality of the cars, they last forever. What would, you, what, what would you say to someone who's looking at buying a car right now? Well, first of all, you know, when I talk to folks, and I've talked to hundreds of people on, on this type of thing, and what I keep telling them is that the biggest enemy you have is the devil on your shoulder, okay? Your problems are in your own mind in terms of, creating um, expectations for yourself that are hard to live up to. So when you talk about a car, I tell them, remember, car is transportation. It is not a lifestyle. Really think about that. A car is not a lifestyle. It's something that you need to safely get from point A to point B. And that's it because it's a depreciating asset. So what I usually tell people to do is fight the urge to get a brand new shiny car instead Look for something that's two or three years old because we all know that's when uh, the depreciation kind of flattens well, let me ask out. You a question: If you if a car a new a new version of that car is thirty thousand dollars, two or three years, what can you pick it up for? Oh, it all depends on the model, right. but I would say two to three years. A thirty thousand dollar car is probably in the twenties, low twenties. So, so you so if you were to buy that new, you've lo- you've just thrown away ten grand in a sense. We always hear the story, your, your car depreciates as soon as you drive it off the lot. And that's the case for the first year, maybe the second year, too, as well. So yeah. if, you, if you're in a situation where right now you need to borrow money to buy a car, you, you, know, you want to uh, buy a car that's a couple years old. I mean, I'll, basically, that's what I do. And it's just amazing what, you know, what a quality car you can get. And we're to the point in our lives where you're trying to pay cash for cars. And the way I got to that point was by... I would make myself car payments. Yes. Yeah, and, I, and that would go into my savings account so that when I went to buy a car, I had the cash for it. I paid my, in other words, I paid my car payment into a savings account. And it's amazing what happens when you go into a car dealership and they go, well, and all they do is focus on the payment. So what do you want your payments well, to be? On, they focus on the lifestyle, yeah. right? They make money by selling you the most expensive car they can. And, a 70, and that's fine. And a 72-month loan. And exactly. so your car payment looks somewhat attractive. And when I say I want to pay cash, they don't even know how to talk to me. It just <laughs> takes all the wind out of their sale. And normally well, now we try to go through a broker and buy them wholesale too. So, I'm t- Most people, you know, know they should buy cars for cash. Most people can't afford it. That's the reality. And that's where you, so, yeah. I was going to say there uh, is where the, uh, the blending comes in. And what I mean by that is you um, – if you do have to borrow, make sure you do have a significant cash down payment, have some cash, and then pay it off as quickly as you can. And that'll get you to a point where you have a car that you're driving that you are that you do not have to pay um, on, and then instead you pay yourself. Mm-hmm. And now you're ahead of the game. You're not chasing the and bus. you have a larger down payment the next time, and eventually you'll get into a winning yes, position. Sir. But the thing is, yep. is don't let them guide you into a discussion about payments. Say, I want to talk about the cost of the car. What is think about cost? what a car, think about what a car dealer tells you. He's talking to you about lifestyle almost always, mm. and that's what you've got to recognize and say, "I appreciate that, but that's not what I'm looking for." I'm looking for transportation. We're talking exactly. with Tom Gripe. He's a man of prudence. Uh, lived in a lot of different financial arenas, succeeded in those, and eventually started his own bank in down in Phoenix. And now he's the president and CEO of the largest. Catholic Credit Union in in the world, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. We'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more with Tom about uh, financial liberty. And uh, you can find Tom Gripe, 
find, uh, contact him through Notre Dame fcu.com invite him to come out and speak especially you you catholic organizations men conferences i think he'd be he's a great speaker kind of a nuts and bolts where where the where the tire meets the road sort of a guy who can bring real practical wisdom as well as uh some really real brilliant uh, type of conversation to business people so uh invite tom to come out and speak to your group he's available uh like you know speaks all over the country this is bear wasnick with the bear wasnick adventure we'll be right back Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know. I kind of like don't associate with CPAs very much because they're usually very boring, but I'm actually a CPA. <laughs> and I work for both Del Deloitte Touche and Price Waterhouse. And I audited banks and, uh, and savings and loans and things like that. And so I've, our guest, Tom Gripe, is the president, has actually started his own a, a bank at one point in his life and is now the president and CEO of the largest Catholic credit in the union in the world, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. So I know what it takes to be who he is, and I really admire him for even sitting in the chair he sits in. And uh, so, Tom, I want to ask you a question. What is the difference between uh, being a member of a, a, just any sort of a, a bank I mean, not, not a member, I guess you would say, having a checking account or you're you know, at a bank vis-a-vis -vis what a credit union is. Sure. Um, there's really two distinctions. One is the difference between a bank and a credit union. The other one is the difference between a credit union and a Catholic credit union. Mm -hmm. The first one is more obvious. Um, banks, you're a customer. The bank is um, there to make money for itself and its private shareholders. Uh, banks do a lot of good in the community. There's great bankers out there, but fundamentally they're there to maximize profit. That's and you know that you were the president of a bank that you started. Sure. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just recognize it, that that's what they do. Credit unions, on the other hand, are co-ops. That means they're not for profit. The, the technical thing is 501c1, which means that we are here not to maximize profits, but to make money for our owners, which are our members. So what we try to do is give you better deals, give you rebates, kick money back to you as much as we can so that you, the member owner, can get maximum profit. And then we keep enough in-house to be sustainable. Now, people say, well, what's the difference between a Catholic credit union and a credit union. Well, it's more in the why and the how of how we do it because the Catholic credit unions are credit unions, but the difference is why we do what we do. And put it very simply, Bear, it's because we do it because we wanna be the hands and feet of our Lord. It's all about why we do these things. It's a mission for us. We work with the church, we work with parishes, we work with people in the community and we help them as if they were our own brothers and sisters, our parents. And we try to go the extra mile with love and to help them make the right decision. Sometimes it means don't get a loan. And over time, I think um, it really makes a, a, a difference in the community and in the lives of people that are our owners. You know, Tom, the thing is, I, I got to know you at Napa Institute. I sat across from you guys, I think, at breakfast. And I just really loved you and Patty. And uh, Cindy and I really enjoyed our time with you. And then we kind of looked out for you guys the rest of the time we were at Napa. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we've talked on a, a few on a few occasions, but the thing that made you really lean forward in your chair and really, I could see was your your passion mission. You know, you have the sense of mission. Is this whole thing about partnering with other Catholic organizations? Uh, I mean, it, it just really this is why you're there. You could have stayed being president of that bank in warm and sunny Arizona, but you came <laughs> to Notre Dame because you have that sense of mission. What give give us a few examples of how you partner with. Catholic organizations or churches? Well, the whole idea, as I said before, is that we are working for our owner members and we do it because it's our mission to be the hands and feet of our Lord. So what we do is we go out to parishes and dioceses, really anybody who will invite us in, and we say, don't view us as a vendor. 
View us as a partner. View us as an extension of one of your own ministries. I've said to some bishops in the past, if you owned your own financial institution, how would your business, how would your mission change? Because that's what we, as a Catholic credit union at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and the hundred other Catholic credit unions in the United States are here to offer you. It's a game changer. It takes time for people to really digest what that means. But once you get your mind around it, and this could be for a bishop or for a pastor, but for an individual consumer who cares about their faith, doing business with somebody who shares the same mission that you do, that supports the things that you do, that donates and contributes to your causes, creates an ecosystem where we help each other become more prosperous. And we have all the ingredients in the Catholic financial community to do that. It's now just a matter of getting the word out and getting people to really embrace it and see the power that that, that opportunity possesses. Okay, so just give me, uh, not, not names, or give me a couple concrete examples of what you've done in partnering with a Catholic organization. Well, um, we are, well, we partner with uh, St. Vincent de Paul on several things. Um, also, there are different dioceses and parishes that we will come in and uh, refinance their debt at a much lower rate and uh, give them uh, higher interest rates on their deposits, uh, give them bank services that are free as opposed to charging them. Again, this is our mission of Do you of, ever work with love. the members of those parishes then too or no? Oh, absolutely. But it, how we usually get into a community is to start with the parish. And then what we'll do is uh, offer deals for the parishioners and the Catholic business people in that community. And that just builds into this ecosystem thing that I'm talking about. So it mm. it, it helps and, and it, it grows their schools. It grows the money they bring in for their other missions, financial literacy. Those are things we offer all for free. And you also do home mortgages, right? We A credit union and, and our credit union, but any credit union does everything a bank does. Mortgages, second mortgages, car loans, credit cards, student loans, checking accounts, savings accounts, business accounts. We even have an investment arm that will invest money for you. Um, oh, there's no exciting. real difference between a bank and a credit yeah, card. So that's exciting. So if someone oh, – here, here's a question for you. Um, you want to make investments and you want your investments to do well for you, but you're concerned about where your money is being invested. And if you go into a mutual fund, which most people is kind of their first place they go for investments, they might find themselves investing in certain co corporations that they don't think are you know, consistent with Catholic teaching. Uh, do you have a, a solution for them? Sure. A good financial advisor should have a lot of different solutions. And we have tons of solutions that are geared to the traditional secular world. But where we differ is we also offer investments that are um, socially responsible funds, things that we say we run through the Catholic filter, if you will, where people can invest in things that um, in, or in companies that have philosophies and, and actions that are more in line with Catholic social teaching and Catholic thought. So we offer all those things to people, and they can pick and choose as they please. Now, do you have a, a resource for people who, you know, here's the thing. Twice a year, I have a, a guest on my show, at least twice a year, to talk about physical fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a CPA, and I've, I've learned so much from my own mistakes, but I've learned a lot by my clients' mistakes. I get to see it all. It's kind of like they come to confession when they come to me, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I really value what you're saying because you can— guide you can help people avoid making mistakes or if they're in a situation where they got themselves in a, a bind you can kind of give them guidance on the way out isn't there something that you offer to a kind of a isn't there some sort of course or something that that is available oh, yeah. through notre dame fcu absolutely several years ago uh we aligned with dave ramsey i think many of your listeners probably know dave ramsey he's a very uh christian based um he's the guy he's the go-to guy for this this area Absolutely. So we've had trainers that have been certified. They've gone down to training in Tennessee and we offer uh, financial peace university is what it's called. We offer those classes for free in both English and Spanish. Yeah, but, if, but what if I live in, uh, I mean, can I take it online or how does that? Sure. We have the ability to uh, teach online as well. I do every single young person here 
you know, that person that's about to get married or is about to have their first child, that's the person. If they were to attend that now, the radical change it would have oh. over the next 20, 30, 40 years of their life. Everyone needs, the, you know, when you go to high school, they don't, they don't teach you even how to balance a checkbook. No. You know, you go to college. I mean, I've actually had, I hate to say it, I've had people work for me that are, you know, have ma master's degrees in business and they have no nuts and bolts knowledge. And Dave, you know, think Dave Ramsey, I think everybody there that, yeah. and everyone out there, you young people especially, you should take that course. That, that's like, I think before you get married, the husband and wife ought to take that course together. And, uh, and it, you know, anyone recently married, you should take it together so that you know you're on the same track, you know, financially. That's, that's awesome that you provide that. I wonder what it would take to get that built into pre-Canaan, huh? Uh, it should be. I, that's what I was thinking. Well, you know, there's some elements of that about, you know, you know financial, financial values. We're talking with Tom Gripe, and the only reason I'm having him on my show is he says I, he can help me get tickets to the Notre Dame uh, football game when I go up there and speak to Legatus. Uh, if people want you to have, come out and speak to, have you come out and speak to their group, Tom, where can they reach you? Well, they can reach me through the website at NotreDameFCU.com, particular in particular, it's T Gripe at Notre Dame FCU dot com. Yeah, have him come out and and, and speak. I, I think you would be so awesome at men's conferences because we talk about be manning up and and there's nothing more uh, more. I mean, that takes such fortitude and self mastery uh, to handle a checkbook and to understand how to. And wouldn't your wife be so proud and happy if you came home with a little bit more financial, uh, you know, armor? We're talking with Tom Gripe. Hey, Tom, we got to leave. Um, if you guys, if you missed the first segment, you should go to our YouTube channel and watch this because there you're going to find about how Tom Gripe really, you know, his banjo playing actually killed someone. So you need to go there and find out all about that. Tom, thanks for being part of our show. Thank you. And okay, we'll be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to, bear, go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave. Go to our store. Uh, get our newsletter. Be part of the tribe. We'll see you next week. Until then, viva Cristo Rey, and may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.